Okay, question four from the 2023 February bar exam. Let's go to the call of the question. What ethical violations has Andy the attorney committed? That's Andy because Andy's the attorney. Answer according to California and ABA authorities. And because it says answer according to California and ABA authorities under, under the entire call of the question, that tells you this is a complete PR issue. It's all PR. There's no other, there's no crossovers or anything. Now, if you'll see a call one, and after call one, it says answer according to California ABA authorities, but call two doesn't, then you know it's a crossover with PR and something. That's FYI, for those of you that did not know that. Take it from the top. Lawn care company manufactured and sold a liquid weed killer for lawn care. Okay, manufacturer sold a liquid weed killer for lawn care. Now, because I know it's PR, I don't have to worry about products liability or stream of commerce or merchants or UCC or anything like that. Paula, as you know, Paula's going to be the plaintiff, brought a personal injury suit against lawn care when her children developed breathing problems after lawn care's weed killer was applied on her lawn. Well, I would assume that causation is going to be pretty easily proven, unless, of course, she's from Alabama, and then you got a whole other issue there. <laughs> To why the Cuban, you know, or West Virginia, anyone know what I'm getting at? Okay, I guess not. Lawn care entered into a valid retainer agreement. So again, they're not just going to thank you. Uh, they're not just, they're not getting at, they have nothing to do. So they don't want you to talk about the reasonableness of the fees. Um, they said it's a valid retainer agreement. You don't need to say what goes on in the retainer agreement. The examiners are supposed as Soji, um, I don't know what's wrong. It's a little distracting. Like Soji? Okay. Um, so, um, the valid retainer agreement, again, we don't know if this is a contingency fee agreement, but they're saying it's valid. So I'm not going to need a discussion of that, which means there are more issues for you to discuss than, than you need. Uh, lawn care and, oh, the defendant, wow. Entered into a valid retainer agreement with the defendant. Oh, it's, it can't be, no, it's the defendant that's entering into the retainer agreement. So it wouldn't be a contingency fee, uh, an attorney to defend lawn care in the action about it. So he's just an hourly thing. All right, and he is a member. And so that the whole first paragraph to me is just background. It's just to paint the story, to give you the, the uh, organization of the parties and everything like that. And he is a member and financial supporter of Citizens Concerned About Chemicals, a consumer group that is currently lobbying for environmental regulations that would remove chemicals such as lawn care's weed killer from the market is unsafe. Okay. The number one most heavily tested subject on the bar exam is professional responsibility. Are we all aware of that? It's, it's a, by a landslide. I think professional in the last 23 years, professional responsibility showed up, I think, 49 times. And the next closest subject is 28, 29 times. And that's like a, a tie between community property, constitutional law, and torts. Now, the number one most heavily tested issue in professional responsibility, which will be the first rule and the first issue listed on the first page of the final act because the final act goes in the order of the most heavily tested subject followed by the most heavily tested issue and that is conflicts of interest all right so you can almost bet you if you can get even money on the fact that conflicts of interest will show up on your bar exam you got great odds because the odds of conflict of interest showing up in a professional responsibility essay is in is astronomical like 88 percent 93 percent so it is one rule that is worth knowing. And here we have a conflict of interest. We have a personal conflict. So now, um, under ABA, he must, uh, is there, first of all, is this conflict consentable? Let's talk about that. Can Andy actually represent lawn care and still without having his personal interest as a, I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's lobbying. To remove chemicals. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think that. I mean, could he, if I was outside counsel and I went to lawn care and they asked, lawn care asked me whether or not Andy is suitable, like if, I would say it's unconsentable. I think that's a pretty high standard, but then I, again, I'm, I'm more cautious. I don't want my attorney to have, a, I don't want my, my defense attorney to have an interest in the other side. So is it unconsentable? Is there a significant risk that the representation will be materially limited? I think it could be, absolutely. Um, so you would need, um, you know, written consent, informed written consent. And, and, and if it was consentable, and I think that's the first part is 
is this conflict consentable? If it's not, if it's unconsentable, then uh, you have to give them, you know, you have to disclose it. And because in California, because this is a personal interest, you just have to get, get a written disclosure, give them written disclosure. Um, but in the ABA, you have to, I think, get informed written consent. Um, you'd have to look at the rule, and I have to look at the outline one real quick for that. Okay, Andy promoted, provided pro bono free legal service to C2A. That was their, what the lobbying thing in the past regarding an unrelated corporate matter, but did not enter into a formal attorney relationship. Okay. Well, oh, he gave them legal advice. Well, they are a former client because even giving somebody legal advice without signing the agreement, all right, we got former client there. So former client, so we have duties to former client. We have a personal conflict. Call one is background info, or first paragraph, background info. Uh, okay, entirely PR. No crossovers. Okay, I'm moving on. Since Andy is convinced that his association with C2A will not affect his representation. Okay. But that's subjective. Does everyone see that? It's an objective standard. Whether a reasonable attorney would say this is unconsentable or it's, or, or the, uh, it, it's not a big deal. Um, now, even though he's convinced, this is subjective. I don't see an object, like, subjectively. Sure, you think you could. Um, do I think that I could represent my girlfriend um, in a lawsuit that might last five years? Yeah, oh yeah, and things are gonna be great. Her and I are gonna be together forever. Come on. Objectively, we all know, like, if you told me you were happily married, I'm like, give it five years. <laughs> you know, like, because maybe, you know, that's, that's being objective versus subjective. It really is. Um, because you never know what's going to happen. People will step out and, and they do things and whatnot. People change. So he did not tell long care. First of all, the fact they subjectively believed it is irrelevant. It has to be an objective attorney to determine whether it's consentable or not. And the fact that he didn't tell long care, even if it is, a, 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 the conflict is consentable, then a reasonable attorney would say, yeah, that's fine. You still have to disclose it. So Andy totally breached, big time breach, big time uh, ethical breach. Okay. Lawn care is, and by the way, just let me take a look at something real quick. I want to pull up ABA model rule. I think it's 1.7, if I'm not mistaken. 1.7. I want to have you guys take a look at it. Okay. Current client. Let's take a look at this. We're going to share the screen real quick. Okay. Just so you can see it. A lawyer shall not represent, because this is such a huge issue, it's worthy to take a look at. It. A lawyer shall not represent a client, and that'd be lawn care, if the representation involves a concurrent conflict of interest, and clearly it's, you know, it exists. If the representation of lawn care will be directly adverse to another client, which could be C2AC, or, or, so a conflict exists if there's a significant risk that the representation will be limited, significantly limited, by Andy's responsibilities to C2A2. Well, the other client would be to the, uh, just the organization itself or to C2A2, which would be the former client or a third person, which is not, you know, here or by a personal interest of the lawyer. Mm. Oh, but notwithstanding the existence, a lawyer may represent if the lawyer reasonably believes, oh, excuse me, so that is subjective, excuse me. That the lawyer, why did I think it was objective? This is not right there. Lawyer reasonably is a lawyer will be able to provide competent, diligent representation to each effective client. Let's see if the word subjective shows up here. No. Oh, I'd have to go in the comments. Um, the role is that the lawyer will be able to provide competent, okay? The representation is not prohibited. And the representation is not, okay, not involved. Okay. And each effective client is informed consent confirmed in writing. So you need informed consent. Informed. Consent confirmed in writing. And let's take a look at some. As rule 1.7. Let's take a look at the comment. I want to take a look at the subjective versus objective. I thought it was objective. Subject. Hmm, no, nothing like that, huh? 
see my reason name. Okay. Okay, representation prohibited the service learner cannot reasonably conclude. Okay, so it is subjective. Wow, I don't know why I did not realize that. Okay. So if we're let's go back, we want to consent. Okay. Okay. So interesting. So it is subjective. Wow, how about that? Yeah, I'm missing something because I know there's an objective standard somewhere. I don't know what I'm missing here. Okay, so we got that. Uh, but yeah, he does need to have informed consent, confirmed in writing. Long care is impressed with Andy's reputation as a litigator, and Andy did not want to jeopardize losing long care as a client by discussing his private concerns about their chemicals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. So that would be uh, also, you have a duty to communicate with your client. I don't know if they're, they're getting at that here. Um, I would not fail to mention it just because you need to tell, you need to tell, you need to communicate with your client. Uh, that kind of is obvious. Um, communicate. In response to an anonymous questionnaire sent to all C2AC members, Andy mentioned the publicly available information regarding Paula's complaint filed against lawn care, but did not provide any other details. Well, his name's on the pleading, for God's sake. I mean, it's not like he can hide. Um, so what is, does anybody know what's going on there? What do you see there? What am I missing? Nika, do you have a, a comment on that? The fact that he didn't provide a... Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while. Maybe this has to do with the duty of, I mean, this confidentiality. I mean, he mentioned publicly available information. There's no confidentiality there because it's public information. I mean, maybe they're getting at that. Duty of confidentiality. Okay. Um... Because he went out and mentioned it, and he doesn't need to mention it, although he's not really disclosing any type of confidential information. It's public, so I would explain that. Um, but did not provide any other details. I mean, he's not required to. One week after Andy returned the questionnaire to C2, C2AC. What the hell is C2? Is, it, is anyone else find that odd? Or is there something there like... Uh, C2AC is like something R2D2. Am I missing something there? No. Um, and obviously, every time, look, just so you know, you've probably heard me about a dozen times throughout the first couple essays. I've used the words, Am I missing something? That's me asking myself that during the exam. So if you have doubts while you're going through the exam, it's normal. Everyone has doubts. Now, I look like an expert every time I teach an essay after I've looked at the answer. And this is why I'm so big on the review process. Look, I'm human like you, I'll miss things. I won't get things in the first read, which is why I need to spend some time. That's why you need a good 10 or 15 minutes in prep time to read it, to understand it, to think about it and to really go through it. And throughout the hour, certain things will pop up in your mind like, oh my God, I didn't even see that. Maybe about a half hour through or so on and so forth. But I think the setup is the most important Understanding the fact pattern, reading it slowly and carefully at at least three times. And if you're really going to shortchange yourself, please do it at least twice. But you cannot just do it once. I mean, I think reading it, I think reading it three times is is, is substantial. I mean, I think it's significant, and I think it's like that's you know the minimum and maximum you probably really need to do. But it really kind of puts things together. When we get to end, return the questionnaire to C two A C. Still like that name. Why don't I just put C C C? Why not just make it easy? Um, again, maybe this is an actual group. It probably is. And received a call from the CEO of Lawn Care, and he's somebody who can speak on behalf, who sent a representative at, at C2AC and called and asked about Paul's lawsuit. And he told the CEO he did not know where, where C2AC would have received the information from and recommended Lawn Care not disclose any details of the lawsuit. Okay. Well, I would agree. Don't disclose any of the details of the lawsuit. He did not know where they could have received. You're lying to your client. This is part of, I think it's uh, section three, the truthfulness and statements to others. You can't straight out lie to your client. Guys, don't lie to your clients. I mean, you know, I get sometimes you do things financially, you'll take on a case, you know, whatever, but don't lie to your clients. Truthfulness and statements to others. I just blatantly lied. Okay. 
and they're not to, so he's telling them not to disclose any so he's uh telling a person to keep quiet forget what rule that is or what that rule has to do it but generally you can't counsel someone not to say anything unless their interests will be affected so this was proper it was proper of him to say do not disclose any information because you don't need to tell people your business. You don't need to tell them about your lawsuit. And you certainly don't need to call talk to C2As too. So I would have, uh, okay, in part two, recommend it. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. So what ethical violations does Andy commit it? Andy's, Andy's going to be looking for a job pretty soon because he needs his bar. Uh, he won't get his bar for this, but you will get sanctioned. Okay, so what ethical violations? Well, uh, you got the conflict. Uh, your duty to former clients. Uh, I think the conflict is just the biggest thing. Possibly duty of communication. Uh, the fact you didn't get informed consent confirmed in writing. Um, a duty of confidentiality. Truthfulness to statement to others. And whether or not telling somebody not to disclose anything was an ethical violation, which I don't see it as a being an ethical violation. And that to me would seem to fill the entire hour. Um, questions, comments, discussion. What's opening up? What do you got? Anything that you saw that maybe I missed? I don't see duty of competence here. I don't want to talk about anything about the fee agreement or anything like that, or have it be in writing. They say it's a valid retainer agreement. Um, now, California has a little distinction about a personal conflict where you just have to pro provide a written disclosure, uh, not necessarily get informed, written consent, and confirmed in writing. And again, I would double check, you know, just to make sure I always look up the rules to make sure everything's accurate, which is how the model answers that I write are released. I make sure that I do look up all these things. And I'm, Going off the cuff here. Um, so questions of what do you guys have? Anything you saw that I didn't discuss? Please let me know. Come on, somebody say so. Go ahead, Vivek. Hey, Jason, I brought up a uh, duty of loyalty, like uh, the information he gave on the questionnaire. Probably, what you know, even though it was public, you know, he was putting it out to a larger audience, like the members of the association. So he was being disloyal to his client by by divulging that information. Okay. That rule seven that we went through, 1.7 conflicts of interest, that is the duty of loyalty. Technically, the, the rules of professional responsibilities do not use the words duty of loyalty. Uh, the comment, the conflict of interest, because you have a call, think about this, Vivek, you're married with kids, right? So yeah. if you are if you're DMing other girls on Instagram or you're going on trist.com or whatever the case is, you're not being loyal to your wife. That makes sense? So that is a conflict. You have a conflict. Your personal interest of having, you know, affairs or whatever the case is, conflicts with your obligation to your wife to maintain loyalty. So the conflict of interest and duty of loyalty are one and the same. FYI. Oh. So um, and because the whole entire essay dealt with that, I would have to think mentioning the publicly available information is why is he disclosing confidential information about his client? You know, I think that probably would be the more pressing issue. But a very good, very good discussion though. I like that. Um, anything else or anyone else? Okie dokie. Well, that one wasn't too difficult. And I think when most people told me that was probably the easier one of the two or the easier one of the five would, would agree with that be the easiest one. Yeah. I can't believe I'm still shocked that I got this objective versus the objective thing. I, I, I have to look that up. I have to look that up because I'm, there's something about the objective component. I was like, no, it's well, objective versus subjective. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. All right. So um, good. We're done with question number 